how to turn bad leads into deals when the seller wants way too much money. Hey gang, my name is Mike with MyRealEstateDojo.com and if you're a real estate investor, if you're a pro, if you're a beginner or somewhere in the middle, you probably talked to a seller that wanted way too much money for their homes and you thought this deal may be a bad lead. And I'm here to tell you that there is A, no such thing as a bad lead. Every lead is good as long as you have a strategy to slice it and dice it, if I can say that. What do I mean by that? Okay. Well, leads are like chess. You have to have strategies for every type of move and every type of players. So when I say when there's no bad lead, I really mean that there is no bad lead. For example, if I talk to a seller, I spend some marketing, paid or free, doesn't matter, and a lead has came in, and this, I'm talking to a seller, and I found out that they're motivated, but they want too much money for their home. I, you know, because the formula that normally that I use is 60 cents on a dollar, minus repairs, um, minus my assignment fee, I'm gonna wholesale it, which I don't wholesale, so I would just be 60 cents minus repairs, okay, uh, and closing costs and things of that nature, and that will be my offer, all right? Uh, it doesn't matter if the market is up, if the market is down, that's my formula. If the seller doesn't want to accept that, then that's not a deal for me for a cash offer. And that's what most investors will say. So if it's not 60 cents on a dollar, if it's not 65 cents on a dollar, I'm not going to pay cash for it. Now, there are investors that are willing to pay more, right, 70 cents, 80 cents, but I'm not that fool. There are fools out there. However, when a seller tells me that they're not willing to accept my cash offer, which is at a deep deep, deep discount, and that's what I do. I'm the pawn shop of real estate. I can't, I can't make a living by paying retail price. I can only make a living by being the pawn shop of real estate, okay? Uh, and we all know what happens at a pawn shop. But if the seller wants full retail price, then I tell them, hey, Mr. Seller, I can't buy your house for a cash offer because my offer doesn't work for you, and it's not a win-win situation for both of us. However, if I could buy your house for your asking price would that work for you and so once he acknowledges that yes I can buy if I can buy his house for his asking price that would work for him then I'll go a little bit deeper and I'll let him know that look I can buy your house for your asking price but here's the terms and the term is where you basically become my private lender okay now the seller could be in two situations they could have a loan or they could have their house clear and clear which they don't have an existing loan so again there's only two ways that this thing can go they have a loan or they don't have a loan. If they don't have a loan, no big deal. If they have a loan, no big deal. Okay, what do I mean? Well, if they have a loan, I just let them know that they can be my private bank. I can step into their shoes and I can start making their monthly payments for them. And I want them to pay their asking price, okay? Now, <clears throat> why couldn't I pay their asking price with cash? Well, cash takes a lot of work and energy to be able to have creativity to generate cash and you have to have discipline to save it. So all that means translates to cash demands a deep discount. If I can't buy your property at a deep discount, I'm not going to use my cash resources. This is why I teach you guys to flip bicycles because if you learn how to flip bicycles, then you learn how to do real estate. They're very, very similar. If you're interested in learning how to flip bicycles, Go to thenewflip.com, again, thenewflip.com, and download my newest course. I'll be happy to help you out, help you out, and learn the business of flipping bicycles. Get paid to get paid, basically. Now, coming back to the story of real estate, the reason I couldn't buy the seller's home for their asking price with cash, because you the cash demands a discount, and a deep discount, that is, and the seller didn't want to go with that. Well, my other option is to turn that bad lead into a bad lead into a deal, and I'll say, look, if I can buy your house for your asking price like you want it, would that work for you? If he says yes, then I deep a little bit deeper, and I'll let him know that I can buy his house for the asking price that he wants, and here are my terms. Here are my conditions that, you know, I'm going to pay him 0% interest rate or close to 0%. I'm, I'm going to do a non-recourse loan that, you know, um, I've talked about a lot. I'll go to my blog at myrealestatedojo.com. I have a lot of videos about that. Um, and I'm also going to, if they have a mortgage, I'm just going to take over their mortgage, aka seller financing. And if they don't have a mortgage, then aka just straight owner financing where 
the seller becomes my private bank. In both situations, the seller is becoming my private bank. Okay, um, if they have a mortgage, if they don't, and if the seller says, "Well, look, I want to, I, I want to get my asking price, which is above the moons and the stars," all right, um, but I don't, I don't want to do owner financing. Then I'll let them know that, hey, this is the solutions that I have. The solutions that I have are like this. I can only do cash. If here's my cash offer, if your hundred, if your house is worth three hundred thousand, I can give you a hundred and fifty thousand minus repairs, and that could, I'll throw money into a briefcase and I'll head out to the title company, or I can do, you know. The, your whole three hundred thousand dollars that you wanted, the hundred three hundred and twenty thousand that you wanted. However, the terms have to be this way because, as I teach you guys in my um, academy, there in negotiation, there's like two knobs. Okay, if the seller controls the price a hundred percent, then I get to control the price. Oh, the, I'm sorry, I get to control the terms a hundred percent. There's only two ways to do it. it. You feel me? We we're trying to get a balance. And if the seller wants to control the price 100%, then I get to control the terms. And the terms are what I dictate. Hey, I want a non-recourse loan. You become my private bank. I'll do a 30-year amortization. Or basically, I'll do a loan for 30 years, and I'll make monthly payments to you. Um, and if they have a mortgage, basically, I'm making them payments to their mortgage company versus him or he or, she, or her. Okay? And the property has a cash flow. That's why I am putting 0% interest rate. Um, basically, whatever mortgage they have, the interest rate they have, I'm just going to mirror it, uh, which means I'm just going to make the, that payment to them. But I'm not going to give them additional, uh, like like a rollover spread additional. I'm not going to do that. Okay. So, and if they want to do that, then then, then I offer those solutions. And if they don't want to, then I keep asking more questions, I, I, you know, to solve their problem. Like, well, so what are you going to do now, Mr. Seller? If the seller says, look, I'm going to rent the property out, then I'll just tell them, look, I have a buddy that does property management and I'll just refer them out to someone that can actually help them because my job is to, to provide a solution for them even if I don't make any money. A lot of times I don't make any money and I just help people and I believe in karma. What goes around comes around. So that said, there's never a bad lead. It's all leads are good. It's understanding the strategy. For example, this scenario I was talking to, if the seller didn't want to go for cash, I provide them a solution for what they wanted to buy their house for asking price. If the seller says, well, this doesn't work, then I'll go back to the cash offer and, and or I'll provide other solutions, which is always, I do provide other solutions like, hey, what are you gonna do next? Well, I'm gonna rent it out. Well, here, here's a guy that, that's in your area. If I know someone in that area that does that and you know he does my properties or has done my properties or whatever, okay, or and, and refer them out. If they say, well, I'm thinking about filing a bankruptcy, okay, no problem. Here's an attorney that I've used for bankruptcy. You know, here's three. You know, good luck, you know. Um, but however, when I say good luck, it doesn't mean adios, I'm not going to call them anymore. It means that, no, they're going to go into my follow-up systems, okay? So because what I've explained to you guys and ladies is that 9 out of 10 deals happen in the funnel, okay? What do I mean in the funnel? In the follow-up funnel. And, and, and whenever you're touching them later, and a lot of people don't realize is they, they talk to a seller, they give an offer, seller rejects, they throw their hands up and they go somewhere else. Uh, with, with, with me, the seller says no, follow up, follow up, follow up, one year, two years, three years later to they're ready because um, maybe the solutions that I have may not work for them, but I know down the line it may work for them and I'm going to be there uh, providing value for them to my solution works for them. And, and that's what I do in my business, all my businesses that I've had in the past um, and, and currently that I will start in the future because it's very, very important to follow up. And real, very important to realize that there's no bad leads. You've got to have a different strategy. If they, if they, lot, a lot of sellers say, okay, if, if I can get 320 for my house and the houses around the area are selling for 300, I'll, I'll become the bank owner, okay? Because no one else is going to offer them that, okay? So now, why would I pay way more than the fair market price? Well, I don't have to use my cash. I could own this property. You know, properties appreciate. Um, over time in America. I mean, if you look at the real estate since the beginning of time, it's just gone up like a Bitcoin, you know what I mean? So yeah, the, the market may be down, which is excellent. Um, so great, creates a lot of opportunities, but I'm willing to buy houses at full retail price. Uh, if I have no money in it or very little money in it, I don't have to get a loan. I don't have, the loan doesn't have to be under my name. Um, yeah, I'm willing to do that, okay? Um, it's a lot of responsibility to take on. Um, but I will take it on and I will do a great job at it or I wouldn't offer to do it. Um, I don't 
tell people don't do it, you know, if they can't afford it, you should never promise people you're going to do something and not be able to do it. Um, but why would I want to, why would I buy a house retail price? Well, if I don't have to come up with 300K cash, I could just come up with, you know, the closing costs or just come up with the first month mortgage payment and I can own the house. I can get the appreciation. I can get the depreciation. I can get cash flow from it by renting it, you know, individually. I could break it up and rent each rooms of it. I, I can break it up and do Airbnb with it. So there's a lot of different. So I can break it up and do Airbnb with it. So there's a lot of different strategies that I can imply to make money. So uh, that said, you know, um, I'm, I'm not giving financial advice. This is the way I look at it, everything that there is no bad leads. Um, they're just learning how to make the leads into a solution, into a deal. And if the deal is not even for me, it's for an attorney or if it's for an agent, then I'm, I'm happy to give that to someone else, allow someone else to eat. And, you know, even though they're going to eat, I'm still going to follow up with them because things may not work out with that person. Or, you know, for example, if they go bankruptcy, maybe eventually they want to sell it again or whatever. And, you know, I just want to be in front of them through follow-up. So that's what I want to let you know. There's no bad leads. They're all deals. If you don't have follow if you don't have strategy, then they will become bad leads. And that's a waste of time and money and energy for everyone. Thank you so much for clicking the like button. Thank you so much for leaving the comment. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Don't forget to get my free book. And if you're interested in seller financing, check out the Subject to Launchpad. 24 courses, including my paperwork and all that stuff, for just 200 bucks. There's a link below, ladies and gentlemen, okay? I'm not going to let you down. 360-day uh, money-back guarantee. Peace. Real quick, download my free book, Real Estate Investing for Beginners, the ultimate starter guide at myrealestatedojo.com where I teach you how to find motivated sellers, buy their homes at a deep discount, and then have the seller become your own private bank. Subject to, get it now. One more thing, if you're looking for private one-on-one -on -one help when it comes to real estate investing, then consider joining my academy where you sit down with me one-on-one, -on -one. two, you get monthly coaching, three, you get access to my best-selling courses, four, you get access to my video library and then the list goes on for just $97 a month. Join me now at MrNoFluff.com. Lastly, the best six-figure side hustle, bicycle flipping. Want to see how? Here's a behind-the-scene video how I did it. Go to thebestsidehustle.mrnofluff.com. Now let's get back to the content.